Okay, hi everyone. Um, we are on chapter 15. There's only a couple more chapters left, so we we'll read 15 today, and then there's 16, 17, 18, 19. So we got five chapters left. We're gonna finish it by the end of the school year. Um, this one is called The Far Side of the Attic. We're gonna do what we have been doing, where I read it first, um, and then we will do questions and an activity. Um, so let's go ahead and get going. Far Side of the Attic. Grandma refused to talk while they were in the ravine. She wore a dour, thoughtful expression and hushed any attempts at conversation. Kendra waited until they were back on the path beside the covered bridge to try her question again. Grandma, Kendra began. Not here, Grandma admonished. We must not discuss the situation out in the open. She motioned for them to huddle close and continued in a hushed tone. Let this suffice. We must go after your grandpa today. Tomorrow might be too late. You will return home immediately, get equipped, and go to the place where he is being held. I will reveal his exact whereabouts once we are indoors. Muriel may not yet know his location. And even if she does, I don't want her to learn that we know. Grandma stopped whispering and hurried them along the path. Sorry if I have been antisocial since leaving Nero, she said after they walked in silence for a couple of minutes. I need to devise a plan. Uh, you kids really did an exceptional job back there. Nobody should have to spend an afternoon rubbing a troll's foot. Um, Seth was heroic on the logs, and Kendra did some well-timed bluffing during the negotiations. You both surpassed my expectations. I never knew you were a masseuse, Kendra said. I learned from Lena. She's collected expert uh, instruction from around the globe. If you ever get a chance to receive a massage from her, don't turn it down. Grandma tucked some errant strands of hair behind her ears. She became distant again for a moment, pursing her lips and starting, staring remotely as she walked. I have a few questions for you two, things that we can talk about in the open. Have you met a man named Warren? Warren, Seth repeated. Handsome and quiet, white hair and skin, Dale's brother? No, Kendra said. They might have brought him to the house on Midsummer's Eve, Grandma prodded. We were with Grandpa Dale and Lena until after sundown, but never saw anybody else, Seth said. I've never even heard him mentioned, Kendra said. Me neither, Seth agreed. Grandma nodded. He must have stayed at the cabin. Have you met Hugo? Yeah, Seth said. He's awesome. I wonder where he went. Grandma gave Seth a measuring glance. I trust he's been attending to his chores in the barn. I don't think so, Kendra said. We had to milk the cow yesterday. You milked Viola? Grandma said, plainly astonished. How? Kendra described how they had set up the ladders and slid down the teats. Seth added details about how milky they had gotten. Resourceful children, Grandma said. Stan had told you nothing about her? We found her because she was mooing so loud, Seth said. She was shaking the whole barn. It looked like her udder was going to explode, Kendra said. Viola is our mo milch cow, K Grandma said. Every pre preserve has such an animal, though not all are bovine. She is older than this preserve itself, which was founded in 1711. At that time, she was brought over from Europe by ship. Born from a milch cow on a preserve in the Pyrenees Pre Mountains, she was about 100 years old when she made the voyage and was already larger than an elephant. She has been here ever since, gradually gaining size each year. Looks like she's about to out outgrow the barn, Seth said. <clears throat> her growth has slowed over the years, but yes, she may one day become too colossal for her current confines. She provides the milk the fairies drink, Kendra said. More than the fairies drink it, her ancient breed is nourished and worshipped by all creatures in fairydom. They place daily enchantments on her food and make secret offerings to honor and strengthen her. In return, her milk functions, and functions as an ambrosia central to their survival. It is no wonder that cows are still considered sacred in certain parts of the world. She must make tons of dung, said Seth. Another blessing. Her manure is the finest fertilizer in the world, coaxing plants to mature much more quickly than usual and sometimes to reach incredible proportions. By the, power of, by the power of her dung, we can reap multiple harvests from a field in a season, and many tropical plants flourish on this property that wouldn't perish otherwise. Do you kids happen to put milk out for the fairies? No, Seth said. We spilled it all down the drain. We were mainly trying to calm down the cow. No matter. The absence of mil milk might make the fairies a little ornery, but they'll get over it. We'll see that they get some tomorrow at the latest. So normally Hugo milks Viola, Kendra summarized. Correct. It is a standing order, so there must be a reason he has not carried it out during the past couple of days. You have not seen him since Midsummer's Eve? No. He was probably assigned to watch over Warren in the cabin until summoned. He should come if we call. Could something have happened to him? Seth asked. A golem may seem like little more than animated matter granted elementary intelligence, but most creatures on this preserve fear Hugo. Few could harm him if they tried. He will be our chief ally in rescuing your grandfather. 
What about Warren? Kendra asked. Will he help too? Grandma frowned. You have not met him because his mind has been ruined. Dale has remained on this preserve mainly in order to care for him. Warren is lost in a catatonic stupor. Fablehaven has many stories, and his is another tragic tale of a mortal venturing where he did not belong. Warren will be no help to us. Anybody else? Seth asked. Like the satyrs? Satyrs, Grandma exclaimed. When have you met satyrs? I may have some choice words for your grandfather when we find him. We met them by accident in the woods, Kendra assured her. We were taking stew from what looked like a well, and they warned us that we were actually stealing from an ogress. Those rogues were protecting their underhanded operation more than you, Grandma huffed. They have been pilfering her stew for years. The scoundrels didn't want to have to rebuild their thieving device. Probably sounded like too much work. Satyrs live for fri frivolity. The ultimate fair weather friends. <clears throat> Your grandfather and I share a mutual respect with various beings on this preserve, but there is not much more loyalty than one uh, would find out in the wild. The herd looks on as the sick or injured are brought down by predators. If your grandfather is to be rescued on such short notice, it will be our doing, with none but Hugo to aid us. It was late afternoon when we reached the yard. Grandma stood with her hands on her hips, taking in the scene. The tree, the ruined tree house, the damaged furniture strewn about the garden, the gaping, uh, gaping glassless windows. I'm afraid to go inside, she muttered. You don't remember how bad it was? Kendra asked. She was a chicken, remember, Seth said. We ate her eggs. Creases appeared on Grandma's brow. It feels like such a betrayal to have your home violated, she said softly. I know sinister evil lurks in the woods, but they have never crossed that boundary. Kendra and Seth followed Grandma across the yard and up the porch. Grandma stooped and picked up a copper triangle, attaching it to a hook hanging from a nail. Kendra remembered noticing the triangle dangling among, dangling among the wind chimes. A short copper rod was linked to the triangle by a chain of beads. Grandma clanged the rod noisily around the inside of the triangle. That should bring Hugo, Grandma explained. She crossed the porch and paused in the doorway, staring into her home. It looks like we've been bombed, she murmured. Such senseless vandalism. She roamed the gutted house in a somber daze, occasionally pausing to pick up a damaged frame or examine the torn photograph inside or to run her hand along the remnants of a beloved piece of furniture. Grandma climbed the stairs and went to her room. Kendra and Seth watched her rummage through the closet, finally withdrawing a metal lunchbox. At least this is intact, Grandma said. Hungry? asked Seth. Kendra slapped him on the shoulder with the back of her hand. What is it, Grandma? Follow me. Downstairs in the kitchen, Grandma opened the lunchbox. She removed a handful of photographs. Help me lay these out. The photos were of the house. Each room was shown at several angles. The exterior was also displayed from multiple perspectives. In total, there were more than a hundred pictures. Grandma and the children began spreading them across the kitchen floor. We took these pictures in case the unthinkable ever occurred, Grandma said. Kendra suddenly made the connection. It's for the brownies. Clever girl, said Grandma. I'm not sure whether they will be up to the challenge, considering the extent of the damage, but they have worked miracles in the past. I'm sorry this calamity befell us during your stay. You shouldn't be, Seth said. It happened because of me. You mustn't assume all the blame, Gra Grandma insisted. What else can we do, Kendra said. We caused it. Kendra didn't do anything, Seth said. She tried to stop me. The whole thing is my fault. Grandma re uh, regarded Seth pensively. You did not mean to harm Grandpa. Yes, you made him vulnerable, vulnerable through your disobedience. As I understand, you were commanded not to look out the window. Had you heeded that order, you would not have been tempted to open the window, and your grandfather would not have been taken. You must face that fact and learn from it. But the full blame for Stan's predic predicament is considerably more guilt than you deserve. Your grandfather and I are caretakers of this estate. We are responsible for the actions of those we bring here, especially children. Stan allowed you to come here to do your parents a favor, but also because we need to start selectively sharing the secret for our prosperity with our posterity. We will not be around forever. The secret has sh was shared with us, and a day came when the responsibility of this enchanted, enchanted refuge fell on our shoulders. One day, we will have to pass the responsibility on to others. She took Seth and Kendra by the hands and fixed them with loving gaze. I know the mistakes you made were not deliberate or malicious. Your grandfather and I have made plenty of mistakes ourselves. So have all the other people who lived here, no matter how wise or cautious. Your grandfather must share the blame for placing you children in a situation where opening a window with kind intentions could cause such harm and destruction. And clearly the fiends who abducted him are ultimately the most culpable. Kendra and Seth were silent. Seth scrunched up his face. If it wasn't for me, Grandpa would be fine right now, he said, fighting hard not to cry. And I would still be a chicken in a cage, Grandma said. Let's worry about fixing the problem instead of taking the blame. 
Don't despair. I know we can set things right. Take me to Dale. Seth nodded, sniffing and rubbing the fore his forearm across his nose. He led the way across the back porch, uh, weaving through the garden toward their destination. There really aren't many fairies, Grandma said. I've never seen the yard so devoid of life. There haven't been many around since they attacked Seth, Kendra said. Since Grandpa vanished, there have been even fewer. When they stood over the painted, life-size metal statue of Dale, Grandma shook her head. I've never seen this particular enchantment, but that's certainly Dale. Can you help him? Grandma a Kendra asked. Perhaps given sufficient time, part of counteracting an enchantment is understanding who placed it and how. We found tracks, Seth said. He showed Grandma the print in the flower bed. Um, although the impression had faded a bit, it remained re recognizable. Grandma frowned. Doesn't look familiar. Many creatures run wild on festival nights that we otherwise never encounter, which is why we take cover indoors. The print may not even be a relevant clue. It could belong to the perpetrator or to the mount of the that the perpetrator or the mount that the perpetrator rode, or it could belong to something that just happened to step there during the night. So we just ignore Dale for now, Kendra asked. We have no alternative. Time is short. We can only hope that by rescuing your grandfather, we can shed more light on what caused Dale's condition and find a way to reverse the curse. Come. They returned to the house, and Grandma spoke over her shoulder as they mounted the stairs uh, to the second floor. There are a few special strongholds within the house. One is the room where you have been staying. Another is a second room on the other side of the attic. I knew it, Kendra said. I could tell from outside that there had to be more to the attic, but I could never find a way in. You are probably searching in the wrong place, Grandma said, leading them down the hall to her room. The two sides of the attic are not interconnected. When you get up there, you fill, I'll fill you in on my strategy. Grandma crouched and picked through a broken nightstand. She found a few hairpins and used them to pile her hair into a matronly bun. Searching more, she located a key. She led them to the master bedroom, bathroom, where they used the key to unlock a closet door. Inside of a closet, the door opened to reveal a second door. This one made of steel and a large combination wheel. A vault door. Grandma began spinning the wheel. Four turns right to 11, three turns left to 28, two right to three, one left to 31, and half a turn right to 18. She pulled a lever and the heavy door clanked open. Carpeted stairs led up to another door. Grandma went up first and Seth and Kendra followed her in the, into the attic. This side of the attic was even larger than the playroom. Grandma flipped a switch and several lights dispelled the dimness. A long workbench dominated one side of the room. The walls above it covered with tools supported on pegs. Handsome wooden cabinets lined the other walls. Various unusual objects littered the room. A birdcage, a phonograph, a battle axe, a hanging scale, a mannequin, a globe the size of a beach ball. Trunks and boxes were arranged in rows on the floor, leaving just enough aisle space to access them. Heavy curtains concealed the windows. Grandma motioned them over to the workbench, where they perched on stools. What's in the boxes? Seth asked. Many things, most of them unsafe. This is where we guard our most prized weapons and talismans. Spell books, ingredients for potions, all the good stuff. You can tell us more about Grandpa now, Kendra said. Yes, you heard Nero say that, Gran that Stan and Lena are being held in the Forgotten Chapel. Let me summarize some history to bring the ramifications into view. Long ago... This land was possessed by a powerful demon named, named Buhamet. Uh, for centuries, he terrorized the natives who dwelt in the region. They learned to avoid certain areas, yet even with these precautions, nowhere near the vicinity was truly safe. The natives made uh, whatever offerings the, the, the natives made whatever offerings the demon seemed to require, but still they lived in fear. When a group of Europeans offered to overthrow the demon in exchange for a claim to the lands it haunted, the incredulous leaders consented. Aided by mighty allies and potent magic, the Europeans successfully subdued and imprisoned the demon. Some years later, they founded Fablehaven on the land that they rested, rested from Buhamut. Years passed, and in the early 1800s, a community comprised chiefly of extended family had developed on this preserve. They built a number of dwellings around the original mansion. This was before the current house and barn were constructed. The old mansion still stands deep within this property, though most of the flimsier structures around it have been swallowed by time and the elements. Although their homes are gone, they did construct one lasting structure, a church. In 1826, thanks to human frailty and foolishness, Buhamut nearly escaped. It could have been a serious disaster because none who remained on the preserve pro pro possessed the resources or knowledge to contend successfully with the entity of his power. 
Although the jailbreak was prevented, the experience proved too unnerving for most who lived here, and the majority departed. The prison that held the demon had been damaged, and with outside help, Muhammad was moved to a new holding area in the basement of the church. Meetings there ceased a few months after that, and in the intervening years, it has become known as the Forgotten Chapel. So, Muhammad is still there, Kendra said. Believe me, we would know if Muhammad had been loosed. Uh, I doubt anyone in the world has the capacity to recapture that fiend if he were to get free. His kind have been absent for too long, imprisoned or destroyed. Those who know how to defeat such a foe have passed on, with none to replace them. Which brings me to my greatest concern, that Muriel might try to release Muhammad. Would she do something that's stupid, Seth cried? Muriel is a student of evil. She's originally imprisoned for tampering with such things. If she reaches the Forgotten Chapel first, which she may have already done, assuming her imps have apprised uh, her of the situation, we will have to neutralize her in order to save your grandfather. If we allow her enough time to release Muhammad, we will, need, we will all need saving. That is why I must try to stop her immediately. Not just you, Seth said. No, Hugo and I will handle this. You kids have done enough. What? Seth exclaimed. No way. Retrieving your grandfather should not be too difficult, but if the worst-case scenario transpires and I fail, Fablehaven could fall. Muhammad never agreed to the treaty that protects this sanctuary. None of his kind would. He has a claim to this land and is, be is a being of sufficient power to overthrow the treaty, plunging the preserve into endless darkness. Every day would become like those fearful festival nights, and this property would be forever uninhabitable for all but the denizens of shadow." Any mortal trapped here would fall prey to horrors too terrible to contemplate. Could that really happen? Kendra asked quietly. It would not be the first time, Grandma said. Preserves have fallen ever since they were instituted. The causes are a myriad, usually stemming from human folly. Some have been reclaimed, others fell beyond redemption. Currently, there are at least 30 fallen preserves in the world. Perhaps the most unnerving are the recent whispers about the Society of the Evening Star. Remember, we heard about them earlier. They're kind of like an evil group. Maddox told us about them, Seth said. Grandpa got a letter warning him to be on the lookout, Kendra added. Traditionally, the fall of a preserve was an uncommon occurrence, maybe one or two a century. About ten years ago, rumors began to circulate that the Society of the Evening Star was working mischief again. Around the same time, preserves began falling at an alarming rate. Four have fallen over the past five years. <clears throat> Why would anybody do that, Kendra asked. Many have sought the answer to that question, Grandma said. To gain riches, power, we who safeguard the preserves are essentially conser cons uh, conservationists. We don't want to see the magnificent magical creatures of the world go extinct. We try not to discriminate against creatures of shadow. We want them to survive as well. Okay, cat. No. <laughs> Sorry, my cat was trying to come up here. Um, but we do contemplate... Nope. But we do compartmentalize them when necessary. Members of the Society of the Evening Star mask their true intentions with rhetoric, alleging that we wrongfully imprison creatures of darkness. Do you? Seth asked. Theo, stop. Sorry, my dog and cat are deciding that they want to play. The most violent and malevolent demons are imprisoned, yes, but that is for the safety of the world. In pursuit of endless carnage and unlawful dominion, they clashed anciently with good humans and creatures of light, and are paying a heavy price for losing. Many other sinister entities were admitted to the preserves only on the condition that they would agree to certain limitations, agreements that they entered voluntarily. A common restriction is that they are not permitted to leave the preserve, so the society considers many of these creatures also incarcerated. They argue that the covenants of the preserve create artificial rules that upset the natural order of things. Hang on one sec. Buddy. Oh, put it out there. Okay. Um, they argue that the covenants of the preserves create artificial rules that upset the natural order of things. They consider the majority of human humanity expendable. Their premise is that the chaos and bloodshed are pre preferable to just regulations. We disagree. Do you think the Evening Star people are involved in kidnapping Grandma? Kendra asked. Grandma shrugged. Possibly. I hope not. If so, it was done with great subtlety. There are powerful limits to how any outsider can intrude on a preserve, and our preserve is more secret than most. Grandma opened a drawer and pulled out a rolled parchment. Unrolling it, she revealed a map of the world. 
Large dots and X's were located on diverse portions of the map, aside from the labeling of major cities. The X's mark fallen preserves, the dots mark active ones. Fablehaven isn't marked, Kendra noticed. Sharp eyes, Grandma said. There are 37 active preserves noted on the map, and five unmarked preserves, of which Fablehaven is one. Even among those most trusted in our community, very few people know about the unmarked preserves. None know of them all. Why? Seth asked. Special artifacts of great power are hidden on these preserves. Uh, those five preserves. What artifacts? Seth asked, excited. I cannot say. I don't know most of the details myself. The artifact here at Fablehaven is not in our possession. It is guarded in an undisclosed location on the property. Evildoers, particularly the Society of the Evening Star, would like nothing more than to collect the artifacts from the hidden preserves. So there are many reasons Fablehaven must be protected, Kendra said. Grandma nodded. Your grandfather and I are prepared to give our lives if necessary. Maybe none of us should go after Grandpa, Kendra said. Can't we get help? There are some who would come to our aid if summoned, but I need to stop Muriel and find your grandfather today. Nobody could reach us that quickly. Fablehaven is protected by secrecy. At times, this becomes a hindrance. I do not know what spells bind Buhamut, but I am certain that, given sufficient time, Muriel will find a way to unravel them. I must act now. Grandma slid off the stool, walking down an aisle, opened a trunk and withdrew an ornate box embossed with vines and flowers. From the box, she removed a small crossbow, not much larger than a pistol. She also took out a small arrow with a black fletching, an ivory shaft, and a silver head. Cool, Seth cried. I want one. This dart will slay any being that was ever mortal, including the enchanted or undead, if I can lodge it in a lethal place. Where is lethal? Kendra asked. The heart and the brain are the surest. Witches can be tricky. This is the only talisman I am certain that will slay Muriel. You're going to kill her? Kendra whispered. Only as a last resort. First, I will try to have Hugo capture her, but the stakes are too high for us to sally forth without a failsafe. If the golem should unforeseeably disappoint me, I lack the skills to subdue Muriel myself. Believe me, the last thing I want is her blood on my hands. Killing a mortal is not quite as grievous a crime as killing a mystical being, but it would still dis dissolve most of the protection afforded me by the treaty. I would probably have to banish myself from the preserve. But she's trying to destroy the whole preserve, Seth complained. Not by directly killing anyone, Grandma said. The chapel is neutral ground. If I go there and kill her, even if I can justify the act, the protection of the treaty will never again be mine. I heard Dale shooting guns and stuff the other night, and the creatures came through the window, Kendra said. Creatures were invading our territory, Grandma explained. Regardless of the reason, by coming into this house, they surrender all their protections. Under those circumstances, Dale could slay them with no fear of retribution, meaning his status under the treaty would remain secure. The same principle would, could work against you if you were to venture into certain forbidden areas of Fablehaven. If you were thus stripped of all protection, it would be open hunting season on Kendra and Seth, which is precisely why those areas are prohibited. I don't get who would punish you for killing Muriel, Seth said. The mystical barriers that protect me would be lifted, and the punishment would naturally follow. You see, as mortals, we can choose to break the rules. The mystical creatures that seek asylum here are not afforded that luxury. Many would break the rules if they could, but they are bound. As long as I obey the rules, I am safe. But if I lose the protections afforded by the treaty, the consequences of my vulnerability would inevitably follow. So does that mean that Grandpa is alive for sure? Grandma Kendra asked in a small voice. They can't kill him or anything? <clears throat> Stan has kept the rules pertaining to bloodshed, and so, even on their night of revelry, the dark creatures of this preserve would not be able to kill him, nor would they be able to force him to go to a place that would enable them to kill him. Imprisoned, tortured, driven insane, turned to lead, maybe, but he has to be alive, and I have to go after him. And I have to come with you, Seth said. And you need backup. Hugo is my backup. Seth scrunched his face, resisting tears. I'm not going to lose you guys, especially when it's my fault. Grandma Sorensen embraced Seth. Sweetheart, I appreciate your courage, but I'm not about to risk losing a grandchild. We won't be in just as much danger... Uh, won't we be in just as much danger here as we would be if we were with you, Kendra said? If the demon gets loose, we'll all be fried. I mean to send you away, off the preserve, Grandma said. Kendra folded her arms. So we can wait outside the gates until our parents get back? Tell them you were killed by a demon and insist that we can't go to the house because it's really a magical preserve that has fallen into darkness? Your parents do not know the true nature of this place, Grandma said, nor would they believe without seeing. 
Exactly, Kendra said. If you fail, the first thing Dad will do is go straight to your house and investigate. Nothing we could say would keep him away, and he'll probably call the cops, and the whole world would find out about this place. They wouldn't see anything, Grandma said, but many would die inexplicably, and actually, they could see the cow, even without the milk, because Viola remains a mortal being. We came in handy with the troll, Seth said, and no matter what you do or say, I'll follow you anyways. Grandma tossed up her hands. Sincerely, children, I think all will be fine. I know I described a dire scenario, but things like this happen on preserves from time to time, and we normally get them resolved. I don't see why this would be any different. Hugo will mend the problem without serious incident, and if it comes to it, I am a crack shot with the crossbow. If you will just wait outside the gates, I'll come with you to you before it gets too late. But I want to see Hugo pound Muriel, Seth insisted. If we're supposed to possibly inherit this place someday, you won't always be able to protect us from danger, Kendra said. Wouldn't it be a good experience for us to get to watch you and Hugo handle the situation? Maybe we can even help. Field trip, Seth cried. Grandma eyed them lovingly. You kids are growing up so fast. All right, so next chapter, 16, is called The Forgotten Chapel. So we're going to go there next. Um, let's look at our questions for the day. We have chapter 15 questions. Number one, who is Warren? Number two, what did Grandma Ruth have inside the lunchbox? Number three, how did they get into the secret side of the attic? Number four, what is inside that secret attic room? Number five, what is the name of the demon imprisoned in the basement of the church? Number six, why would said demon be able to overthrow the treaty that protects Fablehaven and be able to plunge it into darkness? Number seven, what rationale did the Society of the Evening Star give for overthrowing preserves? Number eight, why is Fablehaven one of the five special preserves? Number nine, why didn't Grandpa there you go, number nine. Why didn't Grandpa want to talk grandma want to talk about their situation while situation while they were still outside? Number ten. What do you predict will happen at the Forgotten Chapel? So they're all going to go. What do you think is going to happen? What clues from the text will help you support this prediction? And number 11, what were some of Kendra and Seth's arguments for wanting to go with Grandma to the Forgotten Chapel? Um, so list two or three reasons why they wanted to go and how they convinced her. And then we have a little activity. It's a summary, chapter 15 summary. So it just says, powerful readers use the main ideas from a story to retell in their own words what a text was about. So you're writing the who, what, when, where, why things happened, okay? This chapter, chapter 15, had a lot of good information about Fablehaven, gave you a lot of backstory, um, gave you some just a lot of good information about Fablehaven that will come in play, especially if you continue reading the series. Um, so you're going to, in this box, list five key events that happened. You can do a who, what, when, where, why if you'd like to. Um, so list five key events. They just need to be like bullet points. You don't need to write full sentences. But when you get to the summary part of it, I'd like you to write about five sentences that summarizes what happened in this chapter. So you put what happened in this chapter in your own words in full sentences. So chapter 15 summary. Um, if you want to send it to me, you're more than welcome to. Remember, email is kjones at wusd org. So plenty of options there. Um, we can work on these. And I will be back with the next chapter soon. Have a good day.